With all of the content creators creating video and films, how do you know what's good and what's not? Today, we're going to talk about five ways to spot trash video production. Stay tuned. What's going on, guys? My name is Ty Turner, and if this is your first time on this channel, hey, this channel is simply about turning your passion into profit. We talk about the business side of content creation. If you want to learn how to Photoshop your mama's stretch marks, this is not the channel. But if you want to learn the business side to understanding how to get that bag, how to turn your passion into profit, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to punch you in the throat and we're just going to keep it real with you. I am going to tell you five ways you can spot trash video production. And let's just hope you don't fall within one of these five categories. And if you do, this is your chance to fix it fast. Let's start with number five. Number five is focus issue. A lot of this usually come from people who don't have an understanding of lighting or they haven't added lighting to the scene. And they're trying to shoot at a low f-stop to compensate for lack of light. If they added more light to the scene, they probably wouldn't be trying to follow a subject while shooting at f2.8. These are things that even the most basic cinematographers know. And if they are in that situation, they have a planned shot where they can control focus manually or they have some type of focus automation where it follows the subject. And this subject has probably rehearsed this scene over and over again. Number four is bad audio. Now this can happen a lot of ways. The most common way I've seen it is people not using a microphone, using built-in mics trying to record somebody three to four to five feet away. It's a no-go. I've also seen people use the wrong type of mic in a situation. This require a little bit of research on your part to understand what mic is the right mic. There's a time and place to use a lav mic compared to a overhead boom mic. There are major differences in mic types and understanding each mic type and the scenario in which you need to use them will greatly improve your audio. And that's before we even get to post-production. Post-production is a whole different beast. But if you're having bad audio or audio that isn't up to par, the first place you want to start is how you capture that audio. Number three is LUTs on top of footage that hasn't been color corrected. I hate this with a passion. It is the equivalent of spraying cologne on funk. It doesn't make you smell better. It makes it look worse. If you don't understand how to correct your image, you should not be using LUTs. Your main focus should be understanding how to correct your image. Then you can make it pretty. You've just put rims on an old raggedy rustic car that barely runs. The rims look good, but it looks like crap on the car. Number two is bad lighting. I've seen people mess up daylight shoots simply by not understanding how to diffuse light. They're standing outside at noon with harsh light and harsh shadows, wondering why their image doesn't look good. A lot of people blame it on their camera or their lenses. And a majority of the reasons, I want to say about 75% of the reason why your image don't look like the things you see on TV is because your lack of understanding of lighting, diffusing lighting, bounce lighting, what type of lighting you should add, hair lights, key lights, everything. You don't understand it all. So you have to take some time to fully understand how lights work. When you understand how lights work or how lighting work, or you have the ability to see light, any camera you touch becomes a cinema camera. You'll be able to capture better images with any camera you touch and you will realize how little effect the equipment has on your final image. Pause for a second. I know you're in the middle of something dope, but I wanted to make sure I tell you about a course over at Flash Film Academy that changed the game for me. It literally took my business from attracting mostly low-end clients to consistently landing and closing bigger clients with bigger budgets. It's called the five key steps for creating an effective portfolio that converts. If you're a photographer, videographer, editor, colorist, or graphic designer, it's very simple. This course teaches you how to take what your brand does well and present those things in a way that help the clients 
understand how your brand can solve their problems. When clients are trying to make a decision on why or even if they should work with you, blasting them with your best video clips set to music won't cut it anymore. It doesn't set you apart, show value, or help buyers in the process of making a decision. This course teaches you how to create a commercial for your brand providing a first impression that will help 10X your ability to land quality clients. Remember, if you can't effectively tell your story, clients won't hire you to effectively tell their story. Go to flashfilmacademy.com today to get started. Number one is something that grinds my gears to the fullest. It's people who don't white balance. This is the easiest thing in the world. A lot of people turn in this yellow footage that's indoors and this blue footage that's outdoors and they don't understand why. They blame it on their camera, but it's truly their lack of understanding white balance. When the white balance, why the white balance, what's the result of white balance? And they're usually shooting in an 8-bit codec or some type of non-raw Kodak where they cannot make the change later or they can only go so far as far as pushing their image and it looks like crap instantly instantly when I see a demo reel or someone send me a video and white balance is wrong two shots in I'm done I can no longer focus on whatever talent you say you have if the white balance is not there so many people butcher white balance. So many videographers are out here charging people to shoot video and I see bad white balance. Fix your white balance. Manually white balance. Auto white balance is okay, but learn how to manually dial in your white balance. It is something along with great lighting that will really help your final image. Honorable mention here is shaky footage when the scene doesn't call for it. There are times where shaky footage is wonderful. Save it, Private Ryan. Really intense action. Great. But there are places and times where shaky footage is not needed. We used to call it monkey cam in the army. So I've seen shaky footage on a gimbal where it was too floaty and too weird. And the gimbal operator didn't understand how to get a super steady shot. Maybe he didn't know how to walk with the gimbal. Maybe he didn't know how to hold a gimbal. Maybe someone had a camera and they didn't tuck in their shoulders to get a tighter, more stable shot. But shaky footage is a no-go. And it's something that I see a lot that people try to fix and post and they'll get a jello-y post. And it just, it's not a good look, fam. Try to avoid it. Get you a tripod, get you a monopod. Learn how to use your gimbal. All right, guys, what do you think stand out on trash video? Post what you think in the comments. Something that you keep coming across that just grinds your gears, that just pisses you off every time you see it. I would love to hear about it. All right, guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and uh, I will see you all in the next video.